Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of BA Select Start Base. Every time just nails it. <laughs> Unlike 2K20. Um we are back here today, another week, another episode, another rant. Um no, I I'd like to think that this week we'll have some positive points as well. Hopefully. Yeah. Um once again, it is the Shant and Dan the Man. Dan, how you doing? I'm great. I'm doing great. I'm great. One more time? I'm all right. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> we Once again, we are here. We got a, a couple things we got to get through. First of all, 2K released a patch since the last time yes. that we talked, so we will address that. Dan, you finished my career mode and yes, experimented with yep. a few things in the game, so you'll talk about that as well. And three, I know that if you guys listened to our last episode, we were talking about stuff that 2K should put in or stuff that 2K should take out. Um, this week, we want to go with the approach of not 10, but a few things that we feel like 2K20 has and they should maintain for a 2K21 or a 2K22. So let's start off the first part of the episode by talking about the 1.02, I believe, patch yes. that was released. Dan, you owe the you own the game. Yeah. So your experience after downloading said patch. Um, I'm trying to remember how long it took to download. I I want to say the initial install of the game took longer than this patch, so that's always good. Yeah. Uh, but I think it was a longer, still a longer patch to install than it's some four of the gigabytes. other than some of the other yeah. things I've had to download before. Um. One of the big things that we talked about last time was like the hit detection yes. and uh, general glitchiness. So first of all, I never re actually ran into any of the severe glitches that some people were reporting out out of the gate with like okay. the people bending over backwards, getting caught on stuff, falling through the ring, the, the people walking around in the crouched position, yeah. position all of that. Um, my big thing was th just the hit detection, which was also supposed to be adjusted slightly from this patch and I have seen a, maybe a little bit of okay. improvement but it hasn't been such a catastrophic change where I was like oh so much better yeah that it even really made that much of a difference I okay. think I'm still seeing issues with weapon attacks here and there um, and that could maybe just that could just maybe be specific areas because I think the most recent one I ran into was I was at ringside and I was near the barricade, and the bar like I was swinging down, and I was at a weird angle, and I think I kept missing that way. So I see that could just be that section. All right. Uh, but <laughs> so seems okay. Um, glitches again. Meh. I haven't created any new superstar, so I haven't gotten the bar the the <laughs> spike through the head. Issue the fine again. line. Yeah. Um, so I guess, I, guess uh, I mean, you, you've you been tracking some of this online. People are reporting that stuff tends to be, seems to be better, right? To a certain extent, yeah. I, I saw a few clips where they said now when you want to hit someone with like a chair or a kendo stick, your character turns into the, into the position and then properly hits them. So uh, apparently that was better. Uh, some people said the hit detection, like you said, is... A tad a bit better nothing of significant yeah. difference other than that and the funny thing is they had a list like on their patch list they're like uh, patch 1.02 is out we fixed this we fixed that it's like all these general things stated but the funny thing is when people started playing they're like wait a second but that's that's not fixed that's not fixed that's not fixed so with that said uh, you finished my career mode yes thoughts um so Overall, I liked it. Um, I think there were a couple of uh, plot missteps, I suppose, where they just weren't executed as well as I think they were hoping. Okay. You still haven't ex you still haven't explored the story, correct? Like yes. You have, that, yes, you have not. I have not. No. Okay. So then I need to continue speaking in vagities because I don't want to ruin the story for you. Um. But there's a key plot point that is brought up essentially in every chapter. And one of your one of your characters is always like, oh, should we address this or no? And then they opt not to. 
and then it becomes a major thing at the very end. But along... is this the high school girl? What? Are you talking about the high no, school? She, she's the catalyst for why it becomes a big thing. Okay, Dan. Uh, I don't know. Uh, why? <laughs> why? Um, so the plot point is brought up multiple times, but it's always sort of an. It's sort of a okay, cool. Wh- where are we? What's the end game on this? Yeah. And then you get to that big reveal, that big moment, and you're sort of like, really? This is the payoff. This is what we're going to land on. I see. And they go for this like nice heartwarming moment toward the end uh, that you go, okay, that's fine. But it still doesn't feel like that plot point really stuck or really needed to be in there. Okay. Um, but it does make you realize that Brooklyn Van Braun, raging bitch. <laughs> so... You can check out Raging Bull um, <laughs> on Netflix if they have it. Uh, also, Brooklyn's, like, character model, weird, weird abdominal muscles. Like, there's a weird, she's got, like, a weirdly deep cut in her, like, down the center of her abs. Yeah. That, like, I think is supposed to be defining the abdominal muscles, but you're kind of like, that doesn't seem normal. Well, what in this game does? That's fair. Um, she also, her entrance, I don't know, have you seen Brooklyn Van Van Braun's entrance? No. She... So she's supposed to be a professional MMA fighter. And her body language during her entrance says, this is a snooty bitch <laughs> who's trying to play it off that she knows how to do MMA fighting, but has never actually done any. She just seems really stiff and awkward. So that's kind of the funny thing about it. Eva Marie. <laughs> Eva trying to be an MMA fighter? I didn't say anything. I don't know what you're talking about. Um... So, no, I mean, it's fine. I, I enjoyed the story. Uh, I, I liked where we ended. I was telling you before we got on air um, that if WWE doesn't actually construct the WrestleMania 2029 <laughs> arena that they have, that they p- built for the game, it's a missed opportunity. It's a sharp-looking arena. I would love to see that arena. I've really only seen, like, the ring side of it with the yeah. LED barricade. I really haven't seen the, the main setup. Yeah, it, yeah, it's cool. It looks neat. Okay. Um, so I'd like to see it. Um, and there may or may not be a part of a specific villain in the story that if that, if that, now that I've beaten it, if that element of him isn't available for me to use on a created superstar... I'm going to be pissed, but I have not looked into it yet. Um, That'll be for next time. You'll understand. Someday. After um, Black Friday, more specifically. Yeah, which is in um, three, three weeks. Three weeks. So. It's time. We're getting there. Um, it's Vader time. And so, I uh, no, it's a good story. I, I like the general concept of it. I don't like how dopey <laughs> Trey is. The, the guy? Yeah. Um, and Red, Red's a good character. That's the girl. Yeah. Um, all in all. Okay. Sh- the, there's a couple of things about her, her performance or her, her story arc that don't totally land, but all in all, you, you want to root for her through most of the story. Okay. Would, would you say that? 2K19's original characters were more relatable and likable than the 2K20 characters? Like the Cole Quinns and the Um, Baron Blades and the El Magos over Trey and Red and... uh, I I would say... I would say that Buzz and Cole were probably a more neutral, controlled character. Like, Cole was a little silly. Goofy. He was a little yeah. e- eccentric, but it was charming. Yeah. Um, some of Trey's mannerisms in this make you go, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> or you just... Sorry, you can censor that out. But you just... You're just like, dude, get your shit together. You're a professional wrestler. You shouldn't be this stupid. <laughs> um, Remember, they're just moving pixels. <laughs> it's true. But... Uh, no, I, I mean, I would say that Buzz and Cole are probably a little more contained, but the the lifeblood of the story for 2020 is probably a little bit... It probably speaks a little bit more to you as a person. Okay. 
Um, now, but obviously there's certain things that'll kind of jostle you out of it momentarily. Yeah, yeah. I, I think 2K19 had that too, like that whole multiverse and select your demon. I was like... Yeah, and you even kind of go down that road at one point with this one. I, I saw in the reveal trailer, yeah. Um, in, in, in a moment of brutal honesty, would you say that the um, career mode in 2K20 has a lot or not as much replay value? Um... I think I would say it probably has a little bit more replay value with those uh, those little variances from the the plot where uh -huh. you get those choices of do you want to play which of these three matches yeah. do you want to do this or that but like like I mentioned I don't think it really v modifies your story that much granted I've only done one full playthrough right yeah so I can go back and I can go through it one, once again um, I was I I did mention to you that I would prefer and that this will work better if we aren't relying on a two character story unless you unless of course you you could work it this way where you can limit it but also give it some variance is if so you've got the different classes the gladiator and the strong style and all all of those yeah and there's certain things you can only unlock by playing through as specific classes and leveling those guys up now, with the story being exactly the same for all of them, you're going to get tired of it on the, about the second playthrough. Yeah. Because you've literally lived the entire thing. Unless I get to that crossroad as Red, where I have to pick one of three matches, and each of those three matches sends me down an entirely different yeah. path, it's not going to fly. Um, but if you have a slightly different story or you you treat it like I can't even remember what it was I think it's um you remember when they had Road to Wrestlemania and yes. there was like the four different things yeah. and they were all like a different yes. story the diva storyline the tag team yeah. storyline the single player storyline if line, they yeah. did that but based on the class and like I said you've got the, the I think it's four, like three or four for a male and three or four for a female yeah if you had a different one for each one that's six different stories they need to put together WW or uh, 2K 2K may not necessarily want to go down that road. Yeah. But especially in a a two character thing what you could do is based on your first character that you pick that's the plot that it chooses. So like if I so my female's the main character. So I pick strong style. Strong style is its own story. If I go back and I play it again later and I pick Titan sends me down a different one. Um but then your second character doesn't really matter. That's just their play style. Yeah. But that allows you to sync up different pairs. So, like, I do Strong Style Gladiator on the first one. Then I do Titan and uh, Acrobat. I'm just making them up. Yeah, I don't yeah. the names. On the second one, now I have the story for Strong Style and for Titan. And I can unlock the stuff for uh, the other two. Yeah. While I play. But I get a different story three times. Right. And I think that would be a little bit more um, investing. It would give you a little bit of variance. Like, you can have common threads. Yeah. It can be a multiverse concept. Like, Brooklyn Von Braun can be your villain in all three of them, and you just change the core story. Yes. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. But having to play the same story... Six? Four times, six times. Probably four times. Yeah. Probably four times. Uh, just to unlock all the things, it's going to get boring. Yeah, very quick. Um, yeah, but that's it. Is I, I, I would go back to the formula of the Road to WrestleMania for career mode if you're going to maintain this f multiple class thing. Yeah. Um, otherwise, we'll get rid of that. Let me make my people whatever I want. Let me unlock all the things. Don't make class-specific unlockables, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Because um, then that boils down to the other things that I've, I've dabbled with, like the bump in the night. I a little pop-up came up, said, oh, unlock zombie Sasha Banks. And I went, oh, okay, cool. So I played through that, and it was easy. It was easy, just like the other towers within the bump in the night pack. Um... I did the Daniel Bryan one too. 
Um, so now at this point, all I have left is the showcase for hmm. Demon Finn Balor. Oh. Um, but I've completed all those separate towers already. And so, and, and so you don't want there to be... I mentioned this too. You, there's a fine line between something being uh, too easy or being too hard or being just right. Yeah. And as for just unlocking a wrestler to add into your roster, I don't have a problem with these, these little towers being pretty easy to do. Yeah. If you want that additional challenge, you want to dial up to legend, go for it. I'm cool with with normal and then just having that superstar cuz that's yeah. really why I buy these games is for story mode and then having everybody. Yeah. Cuz then I can play as whoever the hell I want. <laughs> um and I'm assuming the next 3 unlockable DLCs are going to be the same probably. Time. Probably. And I don't have a huge problem with that yet, but we also don't know what they are. Um, Which, at this point, I think they should all be free for everyone, considering you released a broken game. Well, then I expect a $30 refund, you see. <laughs> Get the man his refund. Um, but I swear to God, if Gobbledygooker is not the next one, I'm out. You know you can create him, right? Well, that's all well and good. I don't. I didn't know that, but that's all well and good. <laughs> but he should just be in all of these. He should just be in all the two K games because he's hilarious. Just every year, pre order to play as the gobbledygooker. Exactly. Every year. Um, part of me feels. Uh, part of me feels like I saw something that was like Pilgrim characters. Rusev, Pilgrim yeah. Rusev. Yep, that's a tower on its own, which I think is coming out later. That's gonna be in one of these DLCs then. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. I think it's funny. I think these these originals are going to be hilarious, and so I I I, I don't um, I don't have a problem with uh, these becoming a trend as long as they don't uh, weigh down the rest of the game. Yeah. So yeah, that's my review of, of my career basically. Uh, Anything well, else once outside? You, once you play through it, we can talk about it in, in depth. Yeah, but of course. Yeah. I'm trying not to spoil anything for you or for anyone who hasn't yeah. yet played. Sorry, through. guys. Just financial priorities come first. <laughs> um, outside of career mode, what have you um, dipped into? I <laughs> I went into. Um, the money in the bank making a money in the bank briefcase mm -hmm. and it's boring it's a boring creation suite um it, they make you do it as part of my career at one point oh okay and it's super basic it's like uh pick your color pick your material and put a picture on it if you want and what i did in the one that they made me make in my career was I put i made i made it wood grain because that's what i like if you've seen my laptop uh, oh, yeah. which I posted on my Instagram uh, page as well. I've got a skin on my computer that makes it look like wood grain. So yeah. I made the briefcase wood. I put the Money in the Bank logo, and then I put my show, maybe? I might put Raw at the top, and then I put my name. So it was like Raw Red. And so it's fine. But it's a boring creation suite. However, for those of you who have gone through and played the game a little bit, I did go through, and I made the rock. Well, I didn't make the rock, but I modified... I made a second attire for the rock. And I put him in, like, a suit, and then when he's in the ring, he actually takes the suit coat off, and he's just got the tank top, but he's still wearing the dress pants. I see. And, uh, you'll... you'll you, he's got a red, white, and blue Brahma Bull on the back of the, the jacket, which, if you've played through the game, you'll know where I'm going with this. But... Uh, no, it, it's it's fine. It's fun and um, no glitches. Not that I have encountered since the since the patch. Okay. So maybe they fix that too. Maybe I mean I I'd like to think it's very selective, like depending on what you do. Because I know some people they want to have four ladders in the ring at once or four tables, and they want to like get very crazy with it. And I yeah. think that's when a lot of the glitches start striking. Probably. I I my matches are pretty straightforward. At most, I'll get like. A chair, a kendo stick, a pumpkin pitchfork, and I just repeatedly beat my opponent with that, and I'm in the habit of square, 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 okay, run square, and so like as soon as they stand up, I'm hitting them with the thing, and now they're down again, 
and then I do it again, and they counter, and I hit them with it again, and I just get, I, I get my leverage that way, and I get them in the ring, I hit them with the finisher. They ca- they're really proficient at countering finishers in this one. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So you've got to be, like, on your game, and you have to make sure that be they're... Be selective? Like, yeah. Um... Which sucks, but you get used to it. The, the The flip side of it is that it's it's pretty easy to counter finishing moves. So, like, if you get countered, now suddenly they've got a signature move. But then as long as you have a, a reversal, it's pretty easy to reverse their, yeah. their signature move. And then you get the boost back, and it's it's a dance. What uh, mode are you playing on? Normal? I'm just on normal. So if you're on normal and they're reversing like that, it's probably going to be the same if I go to hard. Because that's where I usually yeah. play is hard. Yeah. Um, Which sucks, because like when everything becomes a reversal fest... Especially, like I told you, in my career, when they um, have more counters than you, you're already behind the eight ball. Um, what you would probably be more inclined to do, I don't know, I guess order doesn't really matter, does it? I was going to say what you might be more inclined to do is play some of the towers, the, the my player towers first to boost your characters up before you actually play the main story, but it's still, you're still going to be having that challenge of not having enough counters. Yeah. So it's, it's silly. I'm going to try turning that off in exhibition and then seeing what happens. I still haven't done that. You're right. Okay, so with that, we now move forward onto the third part of the show, um, talking about stuff that I've seen or that you've played that you would love to see implemented in future 2K games if they're still around. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to go off of what I've seen because that's really all I can do. Um, I noticed that this, and um, again, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm going to go back to him because he's kind of been a character that I've been uh, paying attention to uh, in 2K, Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Um, I think his entrance is good. I, I feel like 2K is kind of cheating. And what do I mean by this? Mm. So if you notice, this is actually the first year where The Undertaker takes off his long coat. Yeah. Or it's not the first year, but Hulk Hogan tearing up his shirt. Yeah. So I noticed that when Hogan is tearing up the shirt, he sort of turns his back to the camera. Yeah. So it's almost like they're faking it. Yeah, they're masking it. Yeah, or when Undertaker takes his coat off, it's a close shot of like, it's a, not it's not a choker, but it's like a medium shot of like, um, you know, his chest and his head. So when he takes it off, y- you really don't see the coat and he just, he hands it over to the guy who usually gets his coat and i'm like but why are you cheating when you were able to do this like four games back where you would see like hogan like tear his shirt like you would see it you know yeah and now the fact that you have to sort of like you have to hide it um other than that like i've noticed with hogan um like there's a very neat little feature where apparently it's it's exclusive to hogan where if you run to the ropes, you know how when Hogan would run to the ropes and he would kind of do this, you know? Uh, they have that. It's specific to him. They also have a move that's specific to him, and you cannot equip it in a create a move set. Right. So it's only for him, which is neat. Um, also, his winning motion is... It's actually like a three-minute winning motion, and it's on point. Um, so that's really cool. Like, to have superstar-specific, like, victory poses to add on to that is really cool i talked about the double people's elbow with uh the rock and mick foley great feature um the stereo moves when you're in a mixed tag match like the double super kicks the double suplexes it's not the best in the world but i'll take it it's a neat little feature um what does shane mcmahon have to do with this what did i say the best in the world, Shane McMahon. Call me WWE. How I'm so happy that's no longer on weekly programming. <laughs> um. Other than that, um. I I I saw something that was. 
so small, but it's like, I remember I'm like, I, I can appreciate the effort. I'm trying to recall what it was. Um, it escapes my mind at the moment. Dan, if you want to breeze through some of the stuff that you want to see implemented while I try to remember what it is that I saw. Uh, well, one of the big things that I like, we just talked about it, that I'd like to see implemented is the, the return of a uh, variant story. So that it's not just you make new you make new characters by appearance, but then everything is verbatim the same. You can use the same voice actors. I don't care uh, as long as there is some difference to the plot of the story that I play through, because um, that's what's going to give me replayability on a game like this. Things like The Last of Us. The story is just so rich, and I I, I know I draw these comparisons a lot, but like the story is so rich that. And it's so emotionally driven yeah. that you feel inclined to play it multiple times. Yeah. Or you have <clears throat> something like, it's an old PlayStation game called The Legend of Dragoon. It's a four-disc video game. Wow. On my longest playthrough, I played 86 hours of that game to get from beginning to end and like boost my people. But in the time of playing through four discs... You sometimes forget about things from the earlier ones, so it, then when you go back and play again, it still feels fresh. Right. But the story of it is also still enjoyable, and the gameplay is still enjoyable, and yeah. so it has that built-in replayability. Versus this, where, oh, well, here's some, here's some different objectives for you to complete. Okay, cool, but if you're going to make me sit through... Because it's not a short story mode. It's not a short story mode. How many episodes have we done where I've been? Ha I have. I've. I, I mean, I've had other stuff going on, but I've been actively trying to get through my player mode. So it's n and I've been talking about my experience on it at least three episodes. So we've been talking yeah. at least a month. Ish. Ish. Yeah. When did the game come out? October twenty second. No way. Okay, so not a month because it's only been like two two weeks. Yeah. So still. Two weeks, two or three episodes we've been talking about it, um, and it it's just, it, it's a long story, but it's not an, a rich enough story for me to say, I, I want to play that again. Yeah. The only reason I, I, I feel impulsed to do it again is because of those small changes. I want to see what happens if I don't take that item to the ring. Yeah. And that alone should, <laughs> the fact that that's the only example I just pulled out <laughs> should tell you how much I'm like, eh. <laughs> um, and who knows? Maybe I won't even play the story again because I think you can do it under the towers. You can rack up, you can level up your people in the towers too. Can you? I would hope so. Because <laughs> otherwise, my story's done and these guys are at Titan level instead of Immortal and there's still shit I can unlock. Uh, your characters, what is their overall? Right now? Uh, that actually, I, I was satisfied with that. Because she's 86, he's 85. Okay, okay. And I That's... just finished the story. But so they give you enough points to, to, to get upgrade. to, like, a decent level. Okay, uh, that's a whole lot better than last year. Yeah, where, where you ended at 64. 60, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I actually remembered, uh, I remember what I forgot a few minutes ago. Um, is that, I don't know if you noticed, but in recent years, again, post 2K14... When you would be playing a tag team match, and let's say if you were DX, yeah. and you, like, let's say if Triple H tags in Shawn Michaels, and they do their double team move, it would be ass backwards, yeah. where Shawn Michaels would kick with his left leg, yeah. and, but this year, they fixed it, where they do it the correct way, yeah. um, and I, I've told you, like, ass backward finishers and moves mm. I absolutely <laughs> hate, which they still have in the game, by the way, yeah. Booker T scissors kick is still ass backwards. Mm -mm. Um, but yeah, I love that they took the time to, to correct that. Um, I remember in earlier games, some of the double team moves would, would not care who you were. And like, you could do the ones that were specific to, uh, specific people. I think there was one where they actually introduced the super kick into the pedigree. Right. I That's think. what I'm talking about. Yeah. And... <laughs> It wouldn't care who you were, so and it Triple would just H Triple H, H, H would be doing super kick. <laughs> uh, the the little things, yeah, the little things. 
Something I do want to comment on that I just think is funny, and I don't remember if I've said this before, but if I have, it's going to be a thing now, and I'm just going to repeat it every episode. Um, so the most recent version of Becky Lynch in the game is a is a 90. Most, right. most recent. And then the other ones are lower. It's like 85, 83, yeah. 87, whatever. Um, I haven't looked at Charlotte. I haven't looked at Bailey. But I was like going through the list, and I saw Sasha, and I went, they did Sasha dirty. Because the most recent she, Sasha is lower than 2017 Sasha. <laughs> she actually made a comment saying that because I didn't volunteer to do a 2K's commercial this year, they, they lowered they my... They lowered her yeah. score? I don't know if that's true. While but, we're talking about it, if I could, again... Because we've already established that she's a little bit of a sourpuss. Okay, Dan, we get it. Uh, that's not AWP. Um... <laughs> I'll just say this. What and uh, okay, I guess since that's going to kind of become your running gimmick, this is going to become mine where I bring up 2K14. Mm-hmm. I was just for nostalgic reasons, I went I went on YouTube and I put 2K14 complete roster. Yeah. Just because I wanted to take a look at the um the interface and just kind of reminisce. And I specifically looked at all the little overalls and I'm like, "You know what? 2K14 did a better job like if you were a main eventer, you were 90s. Yeah. If you were kind of in that main eventing position but didn't you really... You were an upper mid-carder. You're like 88, 89. Yeah. If you're mid-carder, you're 87, 84, 85. But there was a balance. There was a very nice balance. Here, like you said, like, why would Sasha be low when she had 2015 match of the year to the point where people still talk about it to the state? Dan! Why?! Are you shorting people their points? Why? Not. Um, but yeah, I just... And someone brought it up. Actually, a lot of people bring it up where it's just... It's a political game. Like, you know, if they want to have the attention be on Charlotte or, you know, a Roman Reigns or whatever. Oh, we're going to give this guy a higher rating. The fact that Undertaker is in the 80s... Like, that to me is such a crime. Like, Undertaker used to have the highest ratings in wrestling yeah, games. Yeah, he was at, like, 93. Yeah. In WWE 13, he was the highest at 96. Yeah. And I'm like, so Undertaker went from 96 to 88? Yeah. That, like, where in your development did that make any sense? Um, And, of course, Brock Lesnar is a 93. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I just, I feel like there was a better structure back then, you know, and I I think like you need to do that is pay attention to where have these superstars been in roughly the last 12 months since you developed their most recent game. Okay, who was in the main event more? Who was a mid card more? Who was out? Who was in? Who was this? Who was that? As opposed to... Ric Flair's daughter? Ah, just slap on a 90. Oh, Roman Reigns. Oh, or 90s. you can adjust them in real time. Like I mentioned with the, the Madden game. The Updates. One time. They do yeah. the, the update where it actually will change the roster of the team. If somebody has suddenly dropped off the radar or somebody has become more relevant, bump, bump them a couple points. Like I don't, That's like, I don't know where Drew, Drew Gulak is, but he was Cruiserweight champion immediately For, before Leo, I think. Yeah. And for a, for a couple of months. Healthy amount of time, yeah. And I don't remember what his score is, but I think he's like an 84, maybe. But he could, he could and I know this doesn't seem like a lot, but he could easily be like an 86. 86, He was just, he was yep. just your, your cruiserweight champion. Yep. Um, or um, Sasha. Like, honestly, Sasha's a little a little rough to, to, to place because I would almost say because they just brought her back and they had angled her for the main event, she probably should have been higher than her 2017 self. Well, what was the rating? Uh, she's 80 right now, I think, versus she's 81. At, she's at an 80? She's 10 points lower than, than Becky. Current Sasha Banks. Yes. Blue hair Sasha. Okay, this is going to be a big slap in the face. Are the old Sasha Banks' higher than 80? Only the one. Only the 2017. Even tw- even 2015 Sasha. We're, we're going to look this up real quick because this is interesting to me. While we wait, let me just remind everybody that you can catch all your favorite WWE programming only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of just only nine ninety nine. 
Nine ninety nine. It's not ten dollars. Not one hundred dollars. Or one million dollars. But nine ninety nine. By the way, a lot of buffering recently on the network. Crown Jewel was a mess for me. Well, it was also being streamed from Saudi Arabia, so maybe it'll be a little bit better. But, um, you know, from what I hear, it was cut Did off. Did someone cut so... off that live feed? All right, so let's see. Um, oh, they've even got it, like, ranked. Apparently, The Rock's a 93, Lesnar's a 93, 97, Shawn Michaels, 92. But let's see. Where are we at? Sasha. Sasha. Jesus. I wish I would. Can I organize this at all? No. No. Okay. So it's not a sortable table. Okay. Um. But what did I say? I said eighty-one was. Well, you said current Sasha is eighty, and then the twenty-seven. Yeah, Gulak's eighty-two. Okay. So he's actually lower, lower than, than what I you said. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um. Cha oh, that's the other thing. People like Tommaso Ciampa. What is he? Eighty-two. That that's not fair. Bray. 82, Seamus, 82, Dolph, 81, Shane McMahon, 81. That's surprising, actually. Um, For for Christ's sakes, The Fiend is an 88. Like, The Fiend should have been a 91. Yeah. Rusev, 79. Wow. Um, really? Oh, but at that point. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Where'd he go? Cole Quinn, 76. Kurt Hawkins, 75. So an imaginary person. <laughs> In all fairness, Kurt Hawkins had over, two, over like 200 consistent losses. So Why do I feel like the Divas aren't even on here? Was Becky up here? Maybe there's a separate section for the women's? Mm, probably. Let's scroll down further. Ah, there we go. Ah. So Rhonda and Becky are both 90. Of course. Brooklyn Von Braun is 89. So a fictional character is your third highest is already nine points above one of your best female real life wrestlers, Sasha Banks. Yeah. Continue. Okay. So here, so here's Charlotte. So Charlotte is eighty seven. Current Charlotte, twenty eighteen Charlotte, eighty five. Twenty seventeen Charlotte, eighty four. Um, Bailey seventeen eighty three. Uh, Sasha Banks seventeen eighty two. Uh, where, where are you at? Sasha Banks, 80. So, Sasha Banks, 17, is two points higher than current Sasha Banks. Becky Lynch, with the brown hair, is tied with Sasha Banks. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's a mess. And then, you, and then that shows your spread right there. So, who, what did I say your top people were? 90, right? Right. What do you think your lowest is? Dana Brooke? No. Well, she's, no, she's second lowest. She's three points higher than your lowest. 2008 Maria Canellis is 66. So, I, and then your male roster, R Ribby, doesn't count. No Way Jose is, is 67. So you go from 93 to 67. That's a really wide spread. Yeah. Um, I I would say no way Jose like cause two th like twenty uh, Jesus what is it two thousand six with uh, GM mode. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I I I think you had a couple of people who touched the high sixties still in that one, but like William Regal, I want to say was like seventy something. Yeah. I think that should be your your spread though is like. Well, the, the, I, 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 and I think it's a perceived thing. Like, if you're going to have somebody at 93, you could push them to, like, 96 to have your lowest space. person not yeah. fall into the yeah. 60s. Because it makes, it makes no way... Ho I'm going to go back down here. It makes uh, No Way Jose and Mike Kanellis, Noam Dar, Arya Davari, Shane Thorne, El Mago Jr., <laughs> Heath Slater, Gentleman Jack Gallagher, um, makes them all look like shit. Makes them all look awful to have them be seventy one and lower when your top when oh sorry let me go back down here because I just saw that what no Legends? offense to him Mister McMahon is higher than Roderick Strong 
who is in one of the greatest factions in the history of NXT and currently is your North American champion. Yes. He's not, he's tied. He's tied with Roderick Strong. But still, McMahon's a thousand years old. He should be your bottom tier person at this point. And you're still putting him over... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten... 11, 12, 13. 13 actual people. <laughs> so. I'll just say this. like Sort of a crock. Even, and then you've got China, 87. China should not be an... China should be like the least. She should at least have been a 90. Yeah. Those athletes of like Beth Phoenix, Nia Jax, China, who are your powerhouses. Yeah. Especially people like Even China. Even Beth's an 85. Okay. Like, Beth was kind of breaking those uh, those barriers before there was a women's evolution, you know? Yeah. I And especially because now that she's retired, it's like you can kind of take her career and go, okay, what did she do? You know, what did she symbolize? You know, I just feel like it's like and the overalls are not a deal breaker for me. I'm not going to look at a game and go, oh, so-and-so is this overall. Well, guess what? I'm not buying the game. But it's always really good when you feel like there's a healthy structure to that. Because yeah. that's almost determining, is a superstar a heavyweight? Are they a main eventer? Are they a cruiserweight? Are they a mid-card? What are they, you know? Like, this breaks it down enough. Break it down. Brock Lesnar and The Rock are the overall highest-rated male superstars in 2K20, both with an overall of 93. Gargano and Adam Cole are the highest-rated superstars in NXT with an 84. So you're high... So, so there, there's a... a clear of clear visible studyable bias of the main roster superstars versus the NXT superstars. Right. NXT is not second class citizens to the main roster. They're Con superior if you ask me. They're all really good. Yeah. Like a lot of them are really good. They should absolutely be your mid carters within the con the confines of the the rating system. Yeah. Adam Cole, what did I say he is? 84? He should be an 87 minimum. 87, he, He's the champion. Yeah. And they and, and I'm going to, mini, mini spoiler. He is WWE champion in my career mode at in, one point. Oh, because we're future, yeah, okay. Yeah, so at one point he's WWE champion. So your WWE champion is only rated as an 84. We've gone on a long tirade about that. Yes, we have. Uh, so I'd like to see a better rating system going forward. So that's not what we're talking about, but it's in there. Um, no, I like the, the general concept behind the stories. I like the general concept behind these DLC packs. Um, I, th I think what, what I kind of want to see is taking what we've got. The, the, this is, is not a bad, uh, other than the glitches and the, the technical problems, this, I don't think, is a badly outlined game. Like, if this was the first... If if this was the first one that they'd ever done, I don't think they're in a bad place. But it's not. <laughs> so that's why it's not great. If this was our building block, this would be fine. Going from here... And, and in a way, you can almost... You can give them this much forgiveness for that because of the fact that suddenly Ukes was gone. So it is kind of their build, their their building block year. So we'll, we'll, we'll like we'll see going forward. I think what they have right now is not a bad place to start building from. So if they take this, they fine tune it, they give it a little bit more replayability, a little bit more polish. I think I I think it I think it might be okay next year. I'm not gonna buy next year, at launch. Yeah. <laughs> but join the crew. Um. I mean, I don't know. It's because uh, there was always the option of, hey, guys, we don't have a complete game. Yeah. Let's delay it. Um, but the fact that you release it and then you are silent for a good week yeah. until you finally go, yeah, we're going to have a patch update for you. And you list about a gazillion things and only two things out of that gazillion things are really kind of sort of patched. It's like I really question like what like where these guys' mindsets are. Yeah. You know, to me, it just seems like a cash grab. Probably. Throw the game out there. Let them give a let them give us, you know, their sixty bucks. Call it a day. Um, or it's one of those we'll we'll 
we'll throw it out there because we set the the date. It's too late to not release the game, and then we'll just fix it as we go. Which is or still, try to. Which is which is still shitty business. Yeah. We'll fix it afterwards. If I sold you a chest of drawers, and you were like, "Cool, I'm gonna put all my clothes in these drawers." And then you were trying to open the drawers, and the drawers didn't work. So you couldn't get to any of your, of your clothes. So you had to wear the same outfit for the for, for the, the week after you bought it. Yeah. And you called and you said, hey, your chest of drawers is garbage. And I said, all right, cool. I'll come, we'll, we'll come out and we'll fix it. And I came out and I fixed the top drawer. And then left. And then you went home and you tried to open the second drawer and it still didn't open. You'd be like, he just came out to fix this. Yeah, right. What is it? <laughs> Hi. Can you come back out and fix it? Uh, not yet. It's not time for that one. We had to fix the, the yeah. first drawer first. Right. This it's a weird analogy. No, but, but I it think makes it's, sense. I think it's applicable. It makes sense because now they're just fixing one drawer at a time. Right. And we should have at least had two functional drawers from the beginning. Uh, <laughs> um. So we'll see. Um, well, the in the notes it said first patch has been released with more initially to come. When is it coming? I really don't know. Um, but you better fix it before Black Friday. Uh, or else. He's laying down the gauntlet. I, that, that, that's a match that should have been in there. Like, I, I don't... I, 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 I really, like, I'm sorry. I, the, the reason they may not have the gauntlet match in there for us to make is because they have the towers and so many of the towers are taken technically a gauntlet match but yeah but i want you want to build your own gauntlet match well here's the thing what i loved about the the old gauntlet matches again hashtag 2k14 was you basically had a one match mm -hmm. your health didn't regenerate you beat the first guy he rolls out of the ring the second guy comes in yeah i don't want a towers where i beat the guy i go to the menu then i start another match like keep it going yeah, Don't you... take me out of the game. Oh, yeah, the pacing of it. Exactly. Yeah. So, I, I, it's just, it's frustrating to me. Like, I, I, I really don't understand. I, I, I really don't. Like, at this point, and Dan, you've said this the last two times, like, in various parts of the episode, this is honestly unacceptable. Yeah. Like, I'm going to get the game. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, because I'm a wrestling fan. It's just, it's in me to get the game every year. It's, it's something that I look forward to. Yeah. But it's unacceptable that you... You still have essentially a broken game. Yeah. That your public is playing. And it's like, how do you... Yeah, it's riding a tricycle where one of the wheels is wobbling off. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, I, like, someone told me they're like, they for 2K21, they better cut the, the price in half. Or they better do something because, like, you're not getting, you're not, you know. I I, th I think for from a, a business standpoint, I think the fans would be better off if next year, uh, maybe like one person buys the game at launch, <laughs> reviews it, and then everybody else holds off till the holiday when they have to drop the price, so that they take a drastic cut yeah. where they they're like, oh shit. Odds are, odds are though, if I were if I were running a business, if that were what happened, I would never drop the price of the game. Yeah. If there was nobody buying it from day one, I would not drop it for Black Friday. I'd be like, Pff, you guys then. Um, but you would have to like, I I think oh, like in talking about company wise. Yeah. Again, I'm sorry. Like we have to go back to it. Naughty Dog versus 2K. Yeah. I genuinely feel like Naughty Dog cares about the player. Yeah. Because they've taken steps that, you know, you said it, you know, two episodes back where you said you got up in the morning, you saw the post, and they said, guys, we had two options. Either leave some of the stuff out or delay the game and put everything in. So props to Naughty Dog. Granted, yeah, that kind of sucks because I think that the worst part about a video game is the waiting game where you got to wait for it to come out. Mm. But at least it's like with Naughty Dog, you know, okay, they've, they've built that trust with us where it's like, okay... If I put my money in your hands, you're going to give me a great game. 2K yeah. is doing the inverse. Yeah. So. Now, to their credit, one other thing that I'll say that I do like being in the game is 
that uh, they they play with the fan like the fantasy or the suspension to disbelief or the outside of the controlled realm. Yeah. So all of this transpires outside of the confines of the current timeline. This one ends in 2029. So we end the story ten years. Ten from years now. from now. Yeah. And so it 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 makes I think it makes it a little bit more comfortable to to function within that mindset to be like okay so this I, like I mentioned to you last week there's a couple of people in the role of general manager and so you can in that time frame imagine these two being the general managers of the program yeah because of their age based on when it happens and then you're to 10 years down the line and this stuff's happening okay cool I can accept this this is fine yeah so I like the idea of setting it outside of the current realm. Right. Um, something I might even think might be fun would be to backdate on my career, where oh, you like set it back in, like, in the time. 80s, okay. Where yeah, okay. you're you're in amongst people like Hogan and uh, Savage. Pre- premature Hogan, or not premature, but like you know, even at a time where maybe like as you're trying to break into the business, so are the Hogans or the Savages, yeah. you know, and then pre you end the, the, my career as an actual legend within the business. Yeah. And it, I think that could be kind of fun. Obviously that's, that's actually a really good, like 2k. Hope you're listening now. Now on the, on the, the rough side, and this is a little dark, you might find it difficult to find voice actors for all of your superstars of the era. Maybe you can bypass, like maybe you can record for Hogan, or you know, or maybe just yeah, have Randy you, Savage yeah, be a background character or yeah. something, or use um, stock footage or like stuff yeah. from his promos. And I'm sure there's, pl- uh, admittedly, there's probably plenty of impersonators that you could hire. Yeah. No, in, in all honesty, I think that is a, a fantastic idea. Yeah. Is to dive back into the '80s or '90s, and you can show the premature, you know, Hogans or whatever, or the Andre the Giants. And just, you know, talk with, you know, like a fictitious promoter who's trying to get you and you can still have the territory system or you can tease how, you know, Vince McMahon is, you know, you know, in the late 80s and, you know, he's just getting WrestleMania on yeah. the map and, you know, all that kind of rebuilding history type of thing. Yeah. Um, no, no. Good idea. I, I, I think that would because we're, it seems like we focused on what's going on presently and mm-hmm. what's going to happen in the future but we've never had an opportunity of hey what if we dial back the clock and we go back into the past and yeah. change history so yeah. i think that would be a great uh, new thing to try out yeah be fun so yeah if you all need help writing that story so that your character is not a dunce let me know dunce idiot oh like trey because trey's an idiot i like trey i wish he wasn't so dumb Hashtag Trey is dumb. <laughs> T-R-E. Like oh. the number three. Without an E. What? No, Trey. Like, sorry, Spanish. Like oh, Trey, oh, Trey's... oh, in Spanish. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You'll understand soon enough. Hashtag Trace is dumb. Anyway. <laughs> oh, any other thoughts on that? Yes. Would you like to say them? Hashtag push Cesaro. <laughs> oh, so fix your game. Fix your game. Uh, build on what you've got. Um, give a shit. Uh, nobody wants to play a game that the developer didn't care about. I think that's the big takeaway here. Yeah. I'm so hyped about The Last of Us 2 because I A, have that trust with Naughty, Naughty Dog. Dog. Yep. Yeah. B, I, what? Anyway, k- counting is hard. Uh, B, they, I don't know if I said one or A. No, I think you said one. A. B, um, they, A, get it? Uh, no. Uh, but B, they have a track record of quality games. Yes. And 2K, as far as wrestling games goes, not so not much. Not so much. I, I mean,. It, Okay, to their credit, I think that from 2K15 to last year, we saw a good building block where yeah. it was, okay, we're, we're getting there. It's it's taking a minute. But then this one just took a shit. And again, there's certain circumstances that forgive a little bit of it, but you're still, you are still a game developing company. 
if you can't find a way to function without your brother-in-law, your brother-in-law Ukes, uh, Ukes 2K, uh, that's not right, <laughs> whatever, um, then should you be making these games? Hmm. Like, go back to your go back to your basketball and your hockey and your other shit. I mean, I'm just saying, I think everybody was saying that hashtag fix NBA 2K20 was also trending, so... Yeah, so, something's off. A lot of things are off. 2K. Is that the clock? Yes, it is. And, uh... Evolution, Sean. It is a mystery. That it is. Time to find out who I am. With the line in the sand. And on that note, I think it's time that we evolve to the end of this episode. <laughs> hey, do you get it? Yeah, because it's at ev ev evolution. Sasha Banks at an 80. Because given the fact that this episode has degeneration next... <laughs> Well, what is the legacy we want to leave behind, Dan? I don't know, but uh, maybe next episode won't be so rated R, KO. That is if we don't leave a Legion of Doom. Otherwise, somebody might have to come through with uh, a demolition team. Well, I mean, you know, if you and I have a problem, I mean, the mega powers might just explode. Oh, you didn't know? My derriere needs to call somebody. Well, thank you for tuning in this oh, week. Um, I thought we were going to keep that thing going. Nah, I think they got tired of this uh, five references ago. <laughs> or 30, 40 minutes ago when we went off track. Probably. Okay. Uh, if you're still here, feel free to join in. Uh, drop your best... Uh, Elbow drop? Well, I was going to say uh, tag team or stable references. Oh. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Or who do you, who you like seeing... Drop the elbow drop too. Yeah, who, 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 you know what? That's a good one. Who drops the best elbow? Who are the candidates? Macho Man. Ooh, yeah, dig it. Uh, Velveteen Dream. Velvet. Sa Satcha oh. Banks, not Satcha Banks. That's Satcha. Who I'm talking about. She does elbow drops? No, nope, not what I meant to say. Uh, are you who, referring to? Ky we'll go with Kyrie Sane because I was going to come back to the other one. Uh, Bailey. Bailey was the one I, I was going to say. say. Um, but Satcha Banks was still fun to say. Um, and Shawn Michaels. Let's go with that. So, HBK, Velveteen, Macho Man, Bailey, and Kyrie Insane. And remember, 80. Okay. Save the system. No, save your game. <laughs> save, save the system from... Shock. You know, yeah, shock the, the system. system. <laughs> I guess that's not undisputed, is it? Uh, um, just DIY. Um, and we're back. Are we Forgotten Sons? Hey, do you get it? I'm losing my sanity. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you lose your sanity, just sleep and wake up in the morning because it'll be a new day. Um, Don't forget to save the game. Oh, I, I thought. Hey, do you get it? The game? Oh, my God. This episode needs to end. Or else it's a heartbreak, kid. Keep it tight. No. <laughs> Copyright. Uh, has he copyrighted it, though? It's it's not, but I feel like if we're stealing it, then, you we're know. Bar we're borrowing it. I, it's an homage. It, it is, but I feel like we might become public enemy. Did somebody say three minutes? That might be a new world order. Don't forget... To save your game. And do not turn off the system. Yep, that's... That, that's, that's the phrase. I wasn't sure. But always and forever... What, we're doing it again? Hashtag push Cesaro.